Hi, this is Gavin. My website's hickorygolf.co.uk. I thought I'd do a short video about um, golf balls and particularly replica golf balls. And to be clear, I think there is a place in the market for replica golf balls. I, I produce them myself and I'll be showing some on this video. Of course, where it gets into a very um, grey area is where people are producing replicas, copies, call them what you will, and then duping collectors in making out that they are the genuine article. So I'd like to give you a few uh, insights into how to tell the genuine article from, let's call them fakes. So if we go to the first era of golf balls, and one thing I'll just show here first of all is this is a, a desk set, it's a letter holder that shows the history of the golf ball from early feathery, so that's pre-1850 let's say, hand hammered gutter percher, moulded gutter, um, so I should have said sorry, this one is let's say a, a ball from 1850 to 1870. Then you've got moulded gutters from 1870 to let's say 1900. And then you've got into the the bramble with the wound elastic band inners. And then you've got mesh balls of the 1920s and 30s. So that's just really to give you an, an, a quick overview on the different types of golf balls I'm going to be talking about. I'm not going to be talking about featheries today and um, I'll probably be doing a different video on that sometime just specifically on feathery golf balls but what I am going to be talking about is early gutter perches so this ball here I've had this about a year now and it came with a group of other old golf balls and I didn't think too much of it initially and what I think this is, is a genuine smooth gutter from the 1850s. And why do I think that? Well, it has the right colour of gutter percher. Gutter percher goes very black the older it gets because it oxidises. And the overall ball weighs the right amount. Um, but more importantly than that, when I've looked at this ball under a microscope, it shows certain features of the gutter that is identical to some other early gutters that I've got here. I can never be absolutely certain whether this is a smooth gutter. And if you are lo in looking to buy a, an early smooth gutter, I would say you've really got to take care. You do see them online for sale, um, often for a few hundred pounds which if it really is a ball from 1850 is an absolute steal. My personal feeling is is that there's very very few real smooth gutters uh, in existence. This ball here is an early hand hammered gutter and you can see the pattern of the grooves and this is what you would expect to see on a, an old gutty ball from the 1850s, 1860s. Lots of strike marks. The paint is flaking off in quite a lot of places. The paint is a sort of creamy colour rather than a, a, a more brilliant white. As I'll, if I'll pick this one up. Now this is a replica that I've made myself. And clearly there would be no mistaking from these two which is the real one. But let's say somebody did get hold of this ball, the, the replica, and chipped it around and put it in the ground and tried to artificially age it to make it look like a real ball. Could they do that? Well the answer is yes they could to a certain degree, but this ball is not made from natural gutter percha. So I'd be able to look at it under a microscope at the, the raw material underneath 
once some of it had been chipped off, let's say, quite clear to me that it wasn't made from natural gutta percha. In fact, I use a synthetic man-made material, which performs the same. I've, I've hit these balls and they, they go um, very good distances and all the rest of it. So, yeah, the, when it comes down to it, a lot of it is, is in the details and experience of having inspected lots of different balls. Now this ball here is one that I have made from natural gutta percha. And when I first made it, it was a very, very light colour. And I did this about six months ago. And you can see what's happening is it's, it's oxidising naturally. So it's changing colour, it's going darker. So a ball like this, there is a danger that somebody could see this ball, let's say in 10 or 20 years time, and believe that this is an original hand hammered gutta percha. I've only ever made two of these and they stay firmly within my house. And if I was ever to sell one, which I don't know if I ever would, then it would be clearly marked up or stamped as a copy, as I'll show you on some of my later balls. But yes, there is always a danger that something could, in the end, be misunderstood. One thing I would say about old either bulls or clubs, in my experience, one thing that is very difficult to fake is the actual aroma or smell that old items give off. A lot of these old items were kept in houses with open fires, quite dusty, and it's like an old mouldy book in a way. You, you can open the pages and it will have a very distinct aroma, sometimes strong, sometimes quite faint. But that's one thing I look for whenever I'm inspecting a ball that uh, I, I hope is real, but um, uh, might not be. So that's the hand hammered gutters and the smooth one. I should just say this one here is a very early gutter. It dates from the 1850s. It has not a regular pattern on it, so a more random hammered pattern all over it. And that's one of my favorite balls in my collection, which uh, I shall be keeping hold of for hopefully quite some time. Okay, so moving on from the hand hammered gutters, we then go into the molded gutter era, so let's say from about the 1870s onwards. Now these two balls are genuine balls. Um, I think um, that this one on the left with the slightly bigger squares is the earlier one. But if anybody has any information out there that would uh, make them believe differently, then please contact me. So this one here on the right is uh, an Okobo, as I pronounce it. Some people I've heard it pronounced Okobo, but um, I, I like the term Okobo. So this is an 1890, 1895 ball with quite a good proportion of its original paint still in place. But again, it's got one or two strike marks, which you would expect from a ball something that is in absolutely mint condition you would almost certainly i think see of balls that i've inspected when you look at them with a, a magnif under a magnifying glass or under a, a microscope you can see crazing in the paint it's never perfect and that's one way of determining whether a ball that purports to be in mint condition is in fact the real thing so if we compare those with these two balls that, so this one here has a square mesh and I've made this one. And again, 
the, the, the whiteness of the paint, it's more whiter and brilliant white than the genuine old balls. The, the underlying material is, is not gutta percha. This ball here is of a slightly different size than, than the other replica and the pattern the squares are, is a little bit smaller. Uh, one thing I should say is a, a bit of a rule of thumb, but with all rules of thumb it doesn't work in every single case, is on replica balls you tend to have a more prominent uh, equator seam. It's not always the case, but if a ball has a very distinct join in the middle, I would say it would be just a, a cause to, to think twice, is it a real ball or not? And with all the things I'm saying, it's a, it's a matter of taking all of them together to, to come up with a final verdict as to whether a ball is, is real or not. So that's the mesh molded gutters. And you can see I use these very luxurious holders, which of course are egg boxes for holding a lot of these balls. So these are all replicas or uh, let me just check. Yeah, everything in this box is a replica. Okay, moving on to pattern balls. Um, and particularly, let's say, unusual pattern balls. So these two here are genuine balls. So this has a sort of ring donut cover and it's had plenty of life uh, or has had plenty of wear on it. And this one is called the Resilient and it has rings on it with like diamond shapes. And I've used this ball to make a replica, although I don't have one here actually. So what makes me absolutely certain that these balls are real? Well, the wear and the smell, and that's generally it. And the, and the coloration of the paint, as you can see on this one, uh, the paint is very sort of dull white, dirty white, and this one doesn't have any paint left on it whatsoever. So when we're thinking about other patterns, and let's say we're getting into, for example, this one here, again, is a replica that I've made using an original ball, and it's got horseshoes on it. Um, I think this one was called the crane, if I remember rightly. Uh, and yeah, crane. So again, what you can see on these is, on this one particularly, is it's got a, a central join, which where I've, I've glued two halves together and then painted it. And what I do with all the replicas that I sell, um, and I'm sort of tempting fate here because I haven't got one here ready for sale, is I grind off a little bit, smooth off a little bit of the ball, and I stamp it copy. One thing I wanted to draw people's attention to is some years ago, I spied this online for sale, and people might be familiar with it, and it says, an anthology and what it is is limited edition an anthology of the golf ball from original molds dating 1899 to 1939 replica antiques for the true golfers collection now within it you can see that I'm um, pretty if I remember rightly the Worthington company produced some replica balls and these are ones that I've got out of, it, of the box. And these, to my mind, are, I'll use the term dangerous in the market because they were made using original molds. 
some of them the paint uh, has gone a bit more off-white. This first one in my hand, the uh, let me just rearrange myself. So this one is very brilliant white, but others, for example, this one called the Wonder Ball, the paint has dulled, and I think these were made in the 1960s, 1970s. So the, you know they're getting on for 40, 50 years old, and the paint has dulled to an off-white. Now with a bit of artificial aging. I'm sure it wouldn't be difficult to pass that off as a, as a genuine ball. So I would urge any collectors, and I know of at least one person who has been duped by balls from this anthology box. How do we tell the real ones? Um, again, it would come down to experience um, and looking at the ball, perhaps under high magnification. But if it's been made by the original moulds, then it's going to be very, very difficult to ascertain a real ball from a, co a, a more co modern copy, I would suggest. So, other things I would say is um, bramble balls. So, we're talking here of from about 1900 to 1920, I would in general terms, and yeah, the, this one is a, is a copy. Um, hopefully it's stamped up 1997, so somebody has clearly made this. Um, I don't know who actually made these, somebody will probably know, but yeah, it's been clearly marked up 1997 to distinguish it from a, an original ball that would have been made closer to about 1910. So, in summary, the things to look out for are general wear, to check whether there's been a spot that might have been marked with the word copy or replica that then has been ground off and smoothed over and repainted, to determine whether the ball has at the smell of age, um, also if then there are paints, uh, paint spots that have been chipped away, if you can have a look at the ball under some magnification, the parent material. Gutta Percha has a, a, quite an orangey colour under magnification and it's actually a bit translucent if you have a very thin sliver of it. Whereas replicas uh, that I certainly make, the, the parent material um, is jet black. So I hope that's uh, been of interest. If you have any questions, please email me at info at timewarpgolf.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.